about how we can write classes in JavaScript. So I think I just started writing proper JavaScript a few months ago. And then every time I want to make my own app, I realized that I want to write clean code because I want to look back at my code like six months from now and know what, what the hell it was. So I tried to read up on like what's the right way to write stuff. And I realized that JavaScript um, is actually, it's not, it's not a class, it's not a class-based language. It's actually a prototype-based language. But then it's, it's expressive enough that you can actually write classes with it. So I, I researched on a topic and I found it quite interesting. And so I decided that I wanted to give a lightning talk on this topic. So this is actually meant to be a lightning talk and it shouldn't be that long. Um, anyway, so the introduction. Um, so I, like I said, we want to write clean code. And one way to do that is to use inheritance so that we can reuse our code and we don't repeat ourselves. So dry means don't repeat yourself. And we stay dry and not wet, which is write everything twice. Um, so JavaScript is very expressive, and you can use it for many sort of programming paradigm. You can write a functional style. You can write a classical style, which I'm going to introduce or talk about today. Um, yeah. So why did I talk about this? Like I said, when I first wrote app, I actually have no idea how to use class-based um, method in JavaScript. It's like I saw some snippets on Stack Overflow. I copy and paste. It seemed to work, but then somehow it broke. So I thought, OK, I'm going to sit down, read through what, what actually happens behind the, the, under the hood, and do a summary of it. So what should we expect of classical based languages, or class-based languages? We need to know how to define a class. Um, when you define a class, you want to write constructor. Constructor is basically how you want to instantiate your class. And then you write methods. Um, properties, and then you want to reuse your code for subsequent classes. So um, OK, so when you want to define a class, what you do is you, you make a function. So in JavaScript, functions are pretty much quite expressive. You can use it for a lot of things. Um, when you use function, what you're actually doing, OK, when you write a definition function, like function vehicle, uh, what you actually do is you make a function object, and you also make another object, which is, which is the prototype of it, which has a constructor which points back to your function object. So all my slides, you, you just look at the diagram. The diagram is, it really speaks a thousand words. You, you can forget what I write about the words. The words are for me. The diagrams are for you. Um, so <laughs> when you do function vehicle, that's what you are doing. Um, so that, that's how you create a class. And then now we want to make, uh, we want to add a method. So in JavaScript, the prototy uh, prototypical, uh, prototypal way is to add it to the prototype so that all your other instances would have reference to that one function. So here, let's say I'm, I have a function called make sound, and I add it to the prototype. And what actually happens in the diagram is that in your prototype object, you add a new label called make sound, which refers to your function. So what happens when we create a new instance? Um, all right, so yeah, I skip one step. And I, and I, anyway. So once you, have a, once you have a class and you add a method, now what happens when we do new vehicle? So new vehicle is kind of, kind of like class-based language where you create a new instance. So in JavaScript, what happens is you, when you do new vehicle, you create a new object um, which has the prototype that points to your function definition. So like, look at the first line. That's, what's hap that's what happened when you, do when you define vehicle. And then when you do new vehicle, you create a new object where the prototype points to the prototype of the first vehicle. Uh, so now in new vehicle, you have the make sound because it has a reference to the make sound function. So that's how you do um, prototypal inheritance. Um, so now we talk about constructor. So when you define function vehicle and then you, the body of that function, what are, you, what are you actually doing? You're actually making a constructor. And then this basically refers to when you do new something, that new object you're creating is called this. So you can, do, you can add properties to it. So look at the diagram, that's what's happening. Um, so there are actually two ways to add properties to it. Um, the first one is what we do in the constructor. The second one is what we, can, what we do to the actual function object. So this was what we do in the constructor. And this is what happens if we do it in the, the function object. Um, so the red color one is when we add a weight. So now we want to, so when I was trying to do this cool classical stuff, and then I searched on Stack Overflow, there's a difference between object.create and then new. 
So then I was quite confused, like, why is there two different things? Um, so this is, this, is, this is how I clarify it. So when you do new vehicle, what you're doing is you're, cr you're running the constructor um, body. But when you do object.create, you're actually copying the function object. So copying the function object without calling the constructor. So if you look at, if you look at vehicle, it has both the blue type and the red weight. When you do object.create, your new object only has the red weight without the blue type because... It's not quite. Really? Uh, object.create, it doesn't like copy anything. All it does is gives you a new object whose prototype points to whatever you pass in. So object.create here, you, the vehicle in this case is not a prototype. It's actually a um, it's function. Okay. So I, that's, I don't think that's even going to work. So do you, are you saying that the prototype actually points to a vehicle? Uh, the vehicle function. So in this case, what you've got is you have a, you have, uh, so the way the prototypical thing works, see all these pointers that are pointing around. When, you, when you've got an instance in JavaScript, when you access, for example, like the dot type property on your new vehicle, um, it will find it on the, on the current object. But when you go to access, make sound, it won't find it on the current object, so it, it then looks in the prototype chain. Mm -hmm. So when you, um, so, and then it'll find it there. It, when you do this object of create, uh, you've got, it's pointing at this function, which is just like, you know, that's fine. So you won't be able to access make sound, but you will be able to access dot wave. What you should have done is probably um, uh, vehicle the prototype. Probably. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll probably look at this again later. Um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, so like what you say, I think object.create takes the object and makes the prototype point to the... It just gives you a new one. It's exactly like, it's exactly like, um, like new, but it doesn't run a... Uh, the constructor. Function. Right, okay. Okay, ignore this slide then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, now we've added a method, we've added a property, so now we want to... How do we do inheritance with it? Um, so now I'm going to make a new car function, car class, which inherits from vehicle. And the way we do that is we, do the, we, we change the prototype. So um, in this case, we can do car.prototype equal new vehicle. So what we've done is we create a new function car, and then we get the prototype to point to new vehicle. And then, so now we, we ask the question whether car can find make sound. So, so like what Tima said, um, you first, when you, when you create a new car, you ask whether you have make sound in its prototype. So its prototype is a new vehicle, which does not. So it follows the prototype chain, which is now the dotted line, and it finds in the first prototype um, make sound, and therefore you can find make sound. Um, so the last part, um, which is, goes back to the first slide where I said that when you make a new function, you're actually creating like a loop. So to complete the loop, we want to ask, what about what, what does the what's the what should the constructor point to when you do car dot prototype dot constructor? Because when you first make vehicle, you do vehicle dot prototype dot constructor, and you give you it gives you vehicle. So now you want to change the prototype of the the, the constructor of the prototype of car object to point to itself. So you can do one last step to kind of complete the loop, which you do car dot prototype dot constructor equal to car. Um, I personally have not found a use for this constructor pointing to itself because you probably want to do instance of to instance of looks at your prototypical prototypal chain, um, whereas this constructor kind of like just gives you the body of your constructor if you if you need it. So I guess you can use it to determine whether it's a car or vehicle, but there's probably other better way. But this is just for completeness sake so that it looks nicer. Um, yeah, okay, so, so like I said, this is, this is born out of like a self-research thing. So when doing my own research, I, I thought like some of the questions um, that might, I asked myself. So the first one is like, why do we define the, the, the function in the prototype rather than the, the constructor? And the reason for that is that when you run a constructor, if you define your function in it, which you can because functions are first class objects in here, um, you're creating a new instance each time. So your memory might get clocked with repeated instance, and if your function is kind of, uh, you can reuse it, then you just put it in a prototype so that you don't waste memory. 
And for properties, because you want to, you don't want all your instance to share the same property. If that's the case, then fine, you can put it in prototype. But if that's not the case, then you want to put it in your constructor so that each instance has its own version of the properties. Um, so then I, I decided to look at some of the type-based um, derivatives of JavaScript. So like first one that came to came out was like CoffeeScript. So on the left is what you would write in CoffeeScript, and then there's a transpiler which converts it into JavaScript, and then on the right um, is the JavaScript version. So we can see like the pattern that we've we've looked at. So on the left, um, so it's it's all the same thing. I'm just defining an animal, then I'm giving it a property called hypername, and then a function called describe, and then we see how it's done in. Um, how, how, the, how the transpiler converts it to JavaScript. And we can see that we do, in, in there, you have a this.describe. OK, that, um, look at animal.prototype.describe. That's defining a method. And then animal.hypername is describing the property. And then I look at TypeScript, it's the same thing. So this kind of like gave me the confirmation that I'm somewhat on the right track. Um, yeah. Um, so when I was researching this, my friend was like, is this, is this even useful? Because like ES6 is coming out, and in ES6 you have a proper way of defining classes. So like you don't have to you don't have to do all this thing, and you can actually write class animal or class vehicle, and they have a constructor function and do other things. So I would say that it's still useful to understand what is happening underneath, because even in ES6, all your classes are still just synthetic sugar. So it's just what what it does under the hood is converts it back to what we've seen just now and then it runs it. So if you know what's happening under the hood, you, you can write more effective JavaScript because you know what's actually happening. And you, you, got, you get more, the, the language becomes much more expressive than, than if you restrict yourself to a class-based language. Um, yeah, um, so to conclude, um, so I've talked about how we can see, how we can use JavaScript to support classes, kind of. So kind of that's why it's pseudo. Um, there are actually other inheritance models. So one, one person that I like to read or to watch, watch this video is uh, Douglas Crockford. Um, and he said in one of his videos that he stopped using new and this. So I, I have not researched much on this subject, but I think that is quite an interesting idea. Like JavaScript is really very expressive and we shouldn't limit ourselves to just classical methods. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think the second point you can ignore for now. Because, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my reference, and th thanks. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, can you go back to like about four or five slides? Um, the two where you uh, assign the prototype of the car to the to the dog or something. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, just one more, one more. Um, so, so here, th there's one issue with this, is that, um, yes, you set the prototype up correctly so that it's, it's a vehicle, but um, the problem is that you have no control over whether the vehicle constructor is called. So often what you want to do, or, or how it's called. So if you've got an inheritance chain, um, and for example, the thing needs to have you need to supply arguments to your superclass. Um, you can't do it using this method. But there is a solution. Right, so you, you do a call? You do a call on the constructor of your... Well, so that's, that's how you call the constructor, but you... Um, so if, if, you put a, if you put a call, um, you know, vehicle.call this, um, and then pass the arguments in, actually you should probably use apply so then you can have a variable number of arguments um, in the... Uh, in the car constructor, that will give you that will call the vehicle um, constructor for you, which is nice. Yeah. But you've still already called new vehicle, and if new vehicle requires a right, I see what you mean. How do you get around that? As a clue. Okay, so that's that's why you should do object dot create dot the prototype. Yes. Right. So okay. So what you would do here is yeah, object dot create vehicle dot prototype, and then and you also make sure you don't accidentally just do car prototype equals vehicle prototype because if you, if you start adding uh, methods to the car's prototype, mm. they'll also end, end up on the vehicle's prototype. So okay. the reason why you create a you do object of create is it, the way I think about it is like it's like making a read-only copy or um, of 
new vehicle of your of the prototype right. of the object that you pass in, because any new properties will go onto the um, onto the the new object. Yeah. Um, and any time you write to that thing, they go onto the new object. But whenever you read, if you haven't edited, if you haven't changed it or attached new properties to it, it they'll go through yeah. to the um, parent prototype. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So um, bad programming. What happens if you change the prototype of vehicle after uh, so inherited you inherited from you? Um, Will the car yes. still inherit the, the new properties that you modified on the? So program? all the all the property lookup happens dynamically, like at runtime. So if you yeah, if you attach new properties to vehicles prototype um, and then try to access them on from from your car, um, that will work. That's fine. Uh, everything uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's not a copy, but it's not a copy reference that the prototype of car has to the prototype of the yeah. Prototype, it's, it's much easier to think of prototypes as like a form of delegation. So it's like you've got an object and then it's like delegating um, lookups to something else. If you, if you can't find it here, then look here. If you can't find it here, then you look here. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much, that's how prototypes work. And it's all run, run time. So. Yes. Do you have a favorite use case for your new knowledge? Like maybe now as a result of doing uh, how this all works. Like uh, when you go now, you, you can like, do something that maybe you struggled with last time, but now it's like really easy. Well, OK. So the, the question is whether I have any use cases for this. No, uh, favorite use case. OK. So I think this just, OK, coming from I, I came from a Java background. So in Java, you're a class-based language. And although someone did say that if you want to write Java, write Java, don't write JavaScript. Um, <laughs> but like doing the transition phase, I, I find that JavaScript is very powerful because you can write everything on the browser. So you, you can literally write something, and you know that it's going to run everywhere. Someone can just go to the browser and click on it. They don't need to go through like security. I mean, running Java applets on the web seems to be a pain for me. Now, now it's probably better, but it's still a pain. So Coming from Java background, I thought that writing a classical or class-like style is more easy to reason about. And yeah, so I think that's, that's the main use case, trying to really understand what's happening when you write certain code. So you don't get confused when you do, like when you assign something to a prototype and then you realize, why is this affecting all my particles? So let's say you're making a shooting game and then now all your bullets are somewhat spring upwards or something just because you made it bounce off or something like that. Um, so I think it's, it's more of really understanding your language and knowing what weapons you have uh, rather than like crafting the weapon to do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe you can talk a bit about the farming and driver methods. Okay, uh, sure. So, so <laughs> okay, fine. So I guess... I, I thought that this was going to be a lightning talk, so I tried to keep it very <laughs> concise. So if we ask about what we expect, we probably can say we expect private and public properties. So if we, if we define a vehicle class, we want it such that when you do vehicle.something, I mean, vehicle.something is not accessible um, to the public. So you can't just do new vehicle dot, say, title. Title is a bad example, but new vehicle dot title. But, that you, uh, but you still want to have another function that is able to make use of the title. Um, so one way to do that is to make use of closures in JavaScript. So hmm, let me think of where's the best way to, best place to introduce this. So let's say, okay, one, one way to do that is in the constructor. So in JavaScript, when, you, in, when your constructor returns, you can either return an a object or not an object. If you don't return an object, it returns itself. So when you do function.vehicle, we said that we created the two op, um, objects. So if, you don't, if you're in your constructor, you don't return another new object, that's what you get. Um, but if you return a new object, then you're actually creating another object that points to that prototype. <laughs> so in that case, in your, in your function constructor, you can create a private variable, and then you return a new object which does not have reference does not, have any, uh, does not have any reference to that private variable. Uh, probably can do a demo. <laughs> if, this, if, if that's just in a file, 
and you've got a function in the file, nobody can access the function in the file. That's basically, that's private. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So if I do a dot private uh, that's the, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna throw an error. It's gonna be undefined. But yet I can do a dot say me, which should give one. Oh yeah, foo. Sorry, my bad. Um, I can test this. Uh. That's how you create a private variable. Uh, uh, to, don't, to probably try to avoid returning anything from a constructor. Um, okay. The main reason why is because you kind of, there is no, it, it, you actually step around the entire um, uh, construction process by doing that. So like that object that you return mm -hmm. has no, um, uh, it's not of type vehicle. Yeah, the prototype. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. You've literally just returned that object. Yeah. There's nothing, there's no, you, all the magic disappears as soon as you return from the constructor. Okay. Um, but you can, what you can do is, uh, what one, one thing that people often do is uh, return a new instance of the, constru of the constructor um, if the instance is not currently an instance of current uh, integer <laughs> as in as in uh, this, this is how you get around uh, this is how you build APIs that um, can optionally use the new keyword so mm -hmm. if on the first line you said um, if this uh, if bracket uh, it's this instance this oh, instance of this is equal to a vehicle uh, oh, right. yeah. uh, if it's not that return new vehicle with all the arguments, that gives you back a new thing. But that's really the only um, case where you should be putting a return statement in a constructor. Otherwise, you can produce very confusing code when somebody's trying to instance of against your constructor, but you the thing that you can construct yeah. it wasn't okay. actually an instance. OK. Uh, right. But that's private, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Crockford puts this example on his website, and that's why a lot of people use this for like private variables. But I personally find it, like, I, I, I've put it in this style, but it's never really useful. It's really ugly. When you start adding stuff to the prototype, of course, it's a big. In that function, you can't access the private variable type. Mm -hmm. So it gets really, really cluggy. I, I used to do a lot of stuff in this pattern. I've avoided it since the last six months. So it's more trouble than anything else. So what's your current programming style? I, I, just, I just pick a uh, underscore underneath all variables that I don't want other people right. to use. OK. Uh, and when your thing stops working or it doesn't work the way somebody wants it to work, uh, they, you, they'll be very thankful that you underscored yeah. it. Yes. Yes. I have done that so many times. Yeah. Often yeah. the thing that you know you, you try to hide things, you're like, oh, you can't touch my you know, like my private. <laughs> 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 yes, you can't touch my, my magical. <laughs> Yeah, um, but if you make it actually public, um, but you know, indicate that you probably shouldn't play with this, it means that you're going to be in high school. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, thanks.